We often say here on the show, it's the things that you don't say, you don't do, that cause the most impact. The ones that reverberate around the world, because silence, as of course, the tremolos famously said, is golden. I think it's the tremolos, isn't it? Showing my age now, aren't I? Who remembers that track from the 60s? Yes. And the sound of silence, you remember that one, <laughs> Simon and Garfunkel? These, of course, are tracks that perhaps uh, the former well known as Prince Harry might wish to include in his new collection because seemingly, despite wanting all of this, uh, you know, lack of attention, no media intrusion, wanting, of course, to leave the British monarchy so that he could remain a private citizen, well, that's all gone out the window, hasn't it? But there's a bigger story looming, and as ever, I wanted to explain the background to this. And it concerns His Royal Highness, uh, the Prince of Wales, Prince. William and of course King Charles III. So as ever, let me explain. Morning Neil Sean here, nice to see you. As those bombshells or alleged bombshells keep dropping out of that book, it's fascinating isn't it for a lot of people because they feel like they're getting a real insight. Lots of stories you know we knew. Lots of stories are completely fabricated and made up. You know whichever way you look at it, it's very much a therapy speak isn't it? You know I'm doing this to offload onto you. The Nazi uniform thing, total fabrication and I'm putting myself out there and saying you know, look, you're a 20 year old man. The bottom line is you have to decide what you want to wear yourself. You simply cannot now blame it on someone else because it suits your narrative. At least, Harry, be man enough to accept that. What's interesting, though, here is a lot of people are saying, you know, why do the British worlds not speak out? You know, that motto, uh, never complain, never explain, that sort of thing. It was a mantra, of course, that the late and beautiful Queen Elizabeth II really stuck by over 70 years because she knew that that's simply could open a can of worms. It starts debates and other stories go from one story to another. But this really is one thing that Prince Harry, and in particular, he's now battling publishers, Penguin Random House, really want to happen. That's the reason why they're pushing this particular narrative. And let me explain, you see, because while you've got all of this hype going around the book and the endless interviews and leaks and uh, stories dropping literally every hour, what they really need is some validation. And there's a really non-bigger than, of course, the aggrieved elder brother. That's right, His Royal Highness the Prince of Wales. Well, he and the King do not reiterate any word or anything, you know, well, it's really annoying for Penguin Random House. And also, let me explain, this is a commercial venture for the former royal known as Prince Harry. It's nothing to do with royal work at all. You know, it doesn't really uh, go on their radar. So why on earth would they wish to comment about it? But just to give you an idea of why um, Harry, Meghan, and of course, the publishers of that particular book really want someone in seniority to comment about his book Spare is simply this. Truly, it's worth about a million. Can you imagine just exactly what that would be like? Even if, you know, um, Prince William says no, you know, no comment or something like that, the way he did, he can't afford to speak out about it because it's really just nectar to the publicity grinding machine. Now, you might say, well, does he really need that? You know, it's everywhere. What you need is some validation. All we've got right now is one person whinging on to TV cameras who will quite happily listen and sit and chat with him as long as they stick to the agreed questions and the agreed narrative. Not one single one of those journalists is asking a question that has not been agreed well in advance. The one thing that, of course, the media really want is a word from the senior royals. And as I said, for Penguin Random House, this could be worth up to something like one million on the book. And maybe, just maybe, they might even be able to give some of that alleged profit to all of those charities that the former royal claimed he was going to do in that press release. Remember that? Neil Sean in the very heart of London.